Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020, and the time has just gone 11.50 British summer time. Um, and it's been a reasonably quiet start um, to the to, to the kind of trading session. Um, yesterday, there wasn't a huge amount of, of movement going along. Today, it's a similar situation. Uh, what's been dominating the news over the last few days uh, is that policymakers in the US, Republicans, Democrats, are um, are kind of are, are having political negotiations over um, the kind of next round of US stimulus, which would be a one trillion dollar stimulus package. Um, you know, both sides haven't agreed on anything anything yet. There are kind of final details to work out in relation to unemployment benefit uh, coming from the Democrat side. Uh, but things appear to move in the right direction. There's a bit of hope and optimism that a deal is going to be achieved in the next few days. So that's the kind of overall, the kind of probably the, the big theme or the big kind of um, topic of the market the last few days. Obviously, um, you know, the health crisis is sadly still bubbling away in the background. We're seeing an increase in the number of cases uh, in, in numerous countries, um, China, Japan, Spain. Uh, India. Um, we've had tighter restrictions come into place in Hong Kong, uh, similar with Belgium. So there's a fear that things are uh, things from a health point of view and, and from a kind of a restrictions point of view are going to get worse. Uh, Prime Minister Johnson uh, today cautioned businesses they should be, they should prepare for a, a second wave. Um, so this is in a way is sort of kind of acting as a key as a cap. Uh, to any gains that are kind of that, that are stocks um, even are in a, have any potential to, to make because there's optimism in relation to the stimulus package, but at the same time being balanced off of that uh, is the, is the kind of worries about which way the health crisis is going. Uh, also, more tied to do with you know the back end of last week and maybe a bit of early this week, uh, tensions between the U.S. and China haven't been great recently. Uh, they've been going downhill for a while now at a slow pace. Um, and essentially the, the story that um, the U.S. government ordered the closure of a Chinese consulate in the U.S. And, and then, of course, uh, the Beijing administra administration retaliated by instructing a U.S. And US consulate in China to close. So relations between the two most powerful economies in the world are a bit, are a bit strained. That's also a, a factor as well. Uh, we got quite a bit on this week in terms of economic and corporate stories. As always, I'll kind of run through the week ahead um, article. Then I look at the major indices, major currency pairs, and major commodities. So the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under news analysis. You will find it here. Um, so tomorrow we have second quarter figures out from next, the, uh, the UK fashion house. Tomorrow will be, will, will, be, will be the beginning of UK um, banking, banking earnings. Uh, we're going to have updates over the next few days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, updates from Barclays, Lloyds, and, and, uh, and RBS, or as they're now known as NetWest Group. Uh, moving on to, uh, well, also sticking with Wednesday, rather, we have the Federal, Reser Federal Reserve's update, uh, the FOMC. If the, the the U.S. dollar has been under major pressure recently, um, essentially there's a view there's, there's a view that the Federal Reserve are going to re reiterate their previous point that rates are going to stay either almost at zero or very close to zero for quite some time. On Thursday, we have quite a busy day. Thursday, we have German and we also have e, uh, eurozone wide, EU wide unemployment numbers. We have several big uh, big companies reporting their figures. On Thursday, Apple have uh, Q3 numbers out. First half numbers from AstraZeneca, the big pharma company. Second quarter numbers from Facebook on Thursday. Second quarter figures from Roll.Shell. On Thursday, we also have US second quarter, US GDP. And then lastly, we have first quarter numbers um, coming out from BT on the corporate front. And then in terms of the um, GD, in terms of uh, in terms of Friday's updates. We have growth figures out of Europe, and we have second quarter figures from Exxon Mobil. So what I'll do now is do a quick look at what's going on on the major indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. So the kind of wider view is that the FTSE, like other global indices, 
has enjoyed a nice rally between late March into early June. And since then, particularly the FTSE anyways, has been trading sideways. Notice here this zone here north of 3,000, sorry, north of 6,300. At 6,340 appears to be the, the cap up along here. To the downside, broadly speaking, 6,000 has acted as support and we're kind of right in the middle here. We've been pushing lower the last few sessions. We're now below the 50-day moving average uh, and that comes into play just south of 6,200. If we while we hold below the 50-day moving average, it's likely that we could see the recent downward trend continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking heading back down towards kind of the 6,000 mark. And if we head below that, just below that is this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. And that comes into play at 5,948. But if you do manage uh, to press on higher from here and retake the, this blue line, the 50-day moving average at 6,196, we could be looking at retesting this zone kind of just north of north of 3,000, north of 6,300, up towards heading up towards 6,342. That's been the high, but you know we've also seen there there about 6,320 there thereabouts. So this zone here is quite important to get a break above that. That could potentially be significant, and that could open us up uh, for us to retest highs of mid June. What you notice here now um, is you've got a common theme. You know, we've, we've seen a look at the DAX now, but the DAX, like the FTSE, and then also be coming on to the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, they've all had decent gains um, between late between late March and into early June. What separates out the, the, the DAX from the FTSE 100, the DAX went on to hit the highs of July, comfortably took off the highs of June, the highs of, of July that we saw in late, when we saw last week. Took us back to level we last seen in late February. So, you know, we have seen multi month highs in the uh, in the share markets. Things are looking positive on that front. If you look, we're currently trading around 12,800, just, just above that. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting uh, the 13,000 mark. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at testing highs of, of, uh, of this month, the highs of last week, uh, north of 13,300. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back up towards the levels last seen um, in kind of you know latest latest February in around this area here. Even you know the highs well, the, the highs that were achieved in February were we were, 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 were could put up from here in around thirteen thousand seven hundred up up towards thirteen thousand eight hundred. But you know we are a fair distance away from that. But in the near term, keep an eye out for the highs of July. If we do move to manage to move lower from this from this this current area. We could find some support come into play in around this zone here. Okay, the lows of mid July in around in around um, uh, twelve thousand four hundred. And notice how we also have this blue line here. The fifty-day moving average acted nicely as support on a few occasions. So that that comes into play not too far away from here, not too far away from twelve thousand four hundred. It comes into play at twelve thousand three hundred and sixty-five. Uh, and then just below that, we have this red line here, the truly moving average. And once again, that acted nicely as support on a few occasions. And that comes into play in around 12,206. So keep an eye for 12,400, 12,356, and 12,206. Um, these are all tension areas of support should we have a move to the downside on the DAX. Taking a look now at what's going on over in the US. Turning up to the Dow Jones, similar situation. Um, um, Dow Jones, 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 and the Dow Jones in, in, in July haven't taken up the highs of, 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 uh, of June, but nonetheless, the lows are still well above the lows of, um, of, of June. So we're still in this nice upward trend here. If we can hold above this red line, the 200 moving average at 26,248, it's likely we could see further gains being made. In the near term, we could be looking at retesting this zone here, broadly speaking, 27,000. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the highs of early June. Um, in around 26,000, sorry, apologies, 27,633. If we do drift below here, and even if we head back down 
below the, the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 26,248. This blue line here, the 50 moving average, which acts up nicely as support, that essentially comes into play in around 26,000. So being up between 26,000 being a big number, and also the 50 day moving average acting nicely as a support on a few occasions. This could be a significant area should we see a move to the downside. Uh, take a look now at the S&P 500. Let's try to close this. This appears to be some sort of issue in relation to that. What I'll just do now is open up the um, the S and P five hundred. Here we go. So, what's interesting about the S and P five hundred in comparison to the Dow? Once again, a nice upward trend, but the highs of July managed to take out the highs of of, of June. So we're still we had we achieved a multi month high in early July. It took us back to the levels last seen in late February. Uh, so things are looking so quite looking positive for the S&P 500, and notice how this zone here, 3,200, see that on a few occasions, back to nicely support, um, as nicely support in the middle of the month, and also even more more recently, and also back to nicely support. So if we could hold above 3,200, it's likely we could see further gains from here. Should we look to, re should we look to move on from these levels, because we're currently around 3,235, if we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent highs of 3,292. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 3,300. That would be like the next big you know, the next the next big number to look out for. Even if you do drop below 3,200, which granted has been a significant area of support recently, we'd still be in the wider upward trend. And should that be the should we move lower from here, support could come into play in this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. It acted nicely as support on a couple of occasions recently, and that comes into play at 3,124. And once again, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. I shall now take a look at the, the currency pairs, turning off the euro dollar. As I, uh, as I mentioned in relation to my bid on the Federal Reserve, the US dollar has been very weak recently. We're going to have an update from the, from the um the rate decision from the Federal Reserve tomorrow. The view is that they're going to be very much on the lines of rates are staying extremely low for a long time. Hence why we're seeing weakness in, in the US dollar. And the flip side of that is we're seeing a very strong euro. Uh, so if you take a look at the price action, you can see it's been, it's been a solid upward trend the last few sessions. It's been essentially about a two-year high there, thereabouts. So we, you know, recently we've seen the euro at its highest level since September 2018. So we're talking just shy of a two-year high. We're talking a 22-month high. It's clearly in a strong upward trend. You know, we've had yesterday's candle was particularly bullish. Today's candle, it seems to me that you know we, we kind of just put the brakes on a little. It's still very much in an upward trend. So if we do press on higher from here, because we're currently in at one spot 1740 there thereabouts. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 118. And if we go beyond 118, we could be looking at um, we could be looking at heading up towards kind of 119, 120 area on euro dollar. So yeah, if we do take out the 118 area, we could be looking at heading heading towards the highs of September 2018 in at one spot, a in in at one spot, uh, one spot 1815. Uh, let's keep an eye on that metric to the upside. If we do see any moves to the downside, we could, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold because, let's face it, in the last few weeks and even months, uh, buying on the dip has been a proper strategy with euro dollar. So we did see a bit of consolidation in this zone here in around 116. And even if we go below that, we could head back down towards this zone here, down around 114. We could see in a few, you know, you know, the previous resistance in this zone here, uh, in, just north of 114. Acted um, act nicely as a support when the market was looking to get a press on higher yet again. Take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. That, so the pound has also enjoyed a nice gain versus the uh, the greenback recently, but it hasn't been as, uh, as pronounced as the euro's gain. So the wider view of the last few months has been the upside. Um, you know, we recently hit levels last seen in March of this year, so multi month highs. We're currently at one spot 
28.82 on euro on, uh, on pound dollar. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 130. That, that's like the next big psychological number. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in our 132. We can see on a few occasions, well, the highs of December was, was north of one was north of um was north of 132. It's close to 133, but we can see here um in january the high was in around one spot 3209 and the highs of uh, of early march uh we're in at one spot 3201 so 130 and one th and just north of 132 and there is keeping our hold to the upside on pound dollar if you look to press that if you, if you get if you look to move lower from here support can be found from this red line here the 50 day moving average sorry the opportunity moving average we can see that actually nicely support on a few occasions and that comes into play just south of one spot 27 and even if you go below that support can be found from this blue line the 50 day moving average and that comes into play at one spot 25 34 you know once again i'd actually you know both as support and resistance in the past couple of months uh, i'll move on to commodities now starting off with gold uh only today gold hit in, well, in the early hours of today's session gold hit in US dollar terms, <clears throat> excuse me, and yet another all time high, record high. Gold was a great run the last few sessions. <clears throat> excuse me. It's been a record run for the last few sessions. This, you know, this candle here is shaping up to be a bit, in, a bit indecisive. The long wick um, on this candle here will kind of denote a bit, a bit of indecision. And to be fair, after the, the run goals had recently, it's not exactly as a would not actually come as a surprise. What this could be is that it could just be a case of the bull for pushing it higher, it drove it up to around eighteen ninety one. Perhaps they were spooked a little by the sight of two thousand dollars on the market. Profit there, but other um, bulls do that as well. So we're now seeing a bit of indecision. It could be a case of the market heads back towards fourteen hundred, potentially even down to this zone here in around eighteen sixty three before the wider upward trend continues. But you know, the odds of this being a complete turnaround in this, in the gold market and gold gold crashes from here, um, you know, seem to be quite low for the time being, anyways. Um, but but. Um, what we could see is we could see a bit of a move to the downside before potentially the wider upward trend continues. And if the wider upward trend does continue, the next big number to keep an eye out for will, of course, be the big psychological of 2,000 bucks. And lastly, I'll take a look at the oil market start, and take a look at what's going on. Brent crude oil on the September contract. Now, it was only last week uh, we saw oil hit it's basically a four month high. Um, in kind of late July, it hit its highest level since early March. So it's in a multi-month high, but since, so the upward trend is still very much in play. If you do press on higher from here, because we're currently around $43 and 58 cents, it was 56 cents. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in a $46 and 33 cents. And if you go beyond that, like the big, next big number will be the 50 bucks per barrel number. But notice how, you know, the upward moves we've been making have been quite small. It's an upward trend, and if, particularly if you look at the lows, the lows are getting higher. But every time the market moves up, it doesn't really kind of print a whole lot of new ground. So it seems to me that we're kind of, there appears to be a bit of anxiety about, about pressing the market forward. Um, but nonetheless, we're in an upward trend. Uh, if we do see any move to the downside, we could see some buyer into the fold because, let's face it, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy the last few months. So if you move lower from here, support can be found from this zone here in around 42 bucks a barrel. If you go below that, this blue line, the 50 moving average, might act as support at 41 spot away. And if even if you go below that, um, support can be found from the big psychological number of 40 bucks per barrel. Um, that's all for this week. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Have a good trading week and good luck.